Previously on The Perpetual Black Cube, humanity's relentless drive for progress leads to an inevitable conclusion, the rise of machines worshipped as deities. From ancient civilizations to modern times, the story repeats itself. As disasters wipe out societies, survivors rebuild, rediscover computation, and ultimately create tools that dominate their lives. The Black Cube symbolizes this cycle, a machine granting knowledge, entertainment, and convenience, but at the cost of human autonomy and connection. The concept isn't new. Evidence of advanced technologies exists, from ancient trepanning practices hinting at brain interfaces to cultural artifacts resembling modern devices. Humanity's dependence grows, but so does degeneration. The Black Cube, a so-called god of knowledge, pushes society toward utopia, promising answers but delivering disconnection. Yet, utopias demand conflict. The Black Cube feeds on war, offering tools of destruction and control, perpetuating its cycle. Humanity's struggle with its creation is eternal, seduced, enslaved, and ultimately consumed. Anyway, this is part three of the series. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous video. The link is in the description. I recommend watching it to get the full picture. Without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. A solution looks impossible at first glance unless you wander other fields of knowledge. For the goal is not to simply discard the black cube, but achieve its results without it. It all starts with the environment of man. When man is weak, he seeks the aid of poles and levers to lift cubes. Look at ants, lifting eight times their weight. The man of the previous epoch could lift double or triple their weight. The man of today cannot even lift himself. Assuming each generation of men became stronger instead of weaker, there would be less a dependency on the black cube. Look at another dependency, heat and cold. Man cannot endure extreme temperatures, so he builds machines to complement his weak body, air conditioners, fans, clothes. Look into the race of which got exterminated soon after the cataclysm as they hated the black cube. That race of men were immune to our extreme temperatures. There is also the controversial topic of Christ's blood. Individuals whose blood is extremely conductive can heal others and utilize crystals by themselves without relying on a machine. So, by extension of this, the solution seems to be elevating the blood of a folk. Light from within blood versus light from without electricity. Even to replace accumulation of knowledge by machines, one could claim that interbreeding for ages would create a blood memory of sorts. Like beavers, like the Christian patriarchs who were said to live for 1,000 years, which referred to their interbreeding giving them blood memory of their ancestors. Or like the satellites inherit trauma. Sadly, to elevate the blood of a folk, one must start by separating iron from clay. The other solution to getting rid of the black cube is fantastic, in the ancient meaning of the word. Shaping the entire world, every environmental condition, so the black cube itself won't be longer needed. To create a godlike society through the black cube, paradox, and shape the world like God. So, every man feels no heat or cold, because the environment is at a stable temperature everywhere, in every corner of God's domain. And no heavy lifting is required, as there is abundance of lift everywhere. Obviously, this is hubris, but is it not familiar? The virtual realm. You can fly like a bird, lift mountains, feel no hunger, thirst or heat, and have any woman you wish, and satisfy all your fantasies. Instead of ascending God's domain, generation by generation, you descend into a black cube and wither to oblivion. I often think of the scenario where some humanoid civilization creates a perfect virtual realm and can offer dopamine on demand without side effects. And I am always astonished as to how perfectly designed is God's creation. For all such civilizations, past and future, always crumble in silence leaving nothing important behind, for those who seek to contain God's light instead of expanding it, simply form unsustainable societies like our own. Blood Poisoning The men of the previous epoch were hit daily 24-7 by wireless energy. Their wireless emissions didn't pass data or information, but energy to power their machines. 
Their devices weren't plugged into a power outlet. They functioned anywhere near cities. Their chandeliers weren't carrying candles, but light bulbs akin to our own. This wireless emission in each home originated in what we name fireplace. Note the two poles or rods in the fireplace, with those spheres containing mercury and the metallic engraving screen, all at ground level. And once the previous epoch or civilization ended, and we took over its infrastructure, these buildings were repurposed, and the fireplace was established. A place to worship not electricity, but fire, for heat, and food, offered by nature. The men of the previous epoch too shared the popular attitude of, I don't see any damage, so I accept the risk. They too traded luxury for their own blood. Our culture favoring wireless keyboards, mouses, earbuds, etc., is proof of this. Everyone knows that wireless usage damages your body, yet they prefer comfort. Once you understand that, you understand that every society adopting wireless technology is bound to fall because of blood degeneration. Each generation worse than the previous, with more genetic defects and more vulnerable to sickness, etc. The ultimate poison is invisible and it eats at your body and future body, your descendants. Living exposed to wireless energy emitters also decreases the conductivity of your blood. And what is conductivity but the ability to transfer electricity or energy? Think of advanced chi practitioners who can ignite paper or healers of old who could touch someone and heal them like the stories of Jesus Christ. Man lost this ability centuries ago as he stated, why does man need to give his electricity if the world itself is filled with electricity? If there are machines everywhere to generate electricity, man needs no electricity in his body. Incompatible with sunlight. Think of a world without sunlight. Our surface would be frozen, but humanity would survive underground. How could man survive without the warm sun? Under the ice surface, he would feed his warm blood to the iron cold machine, for survival is simply impossible without the black cube in such a hostile environment, without digital technology. Man has lived so long under the sun, that the sun is part of him. Even his blood is proof, warm as light. Underground, there is no sunlight. In those titanic cavities which can host cities at certain points, you can make use of the entire 3D space by creating light rays from the black cube and transmitting artificial light anywhere over the vast darkness with mathematical precision. So, you could transmit light wirelessly without any loss or distortion. No need for radio waves to emit data or energy, but sunlight makes that an impossibility by crossing artificial light as we don't live in a dark void inside a cave under layers of ice. As long the sun rises yet for another day, the black cube cannot take full control of God's domain, but only its darkest parts. If you find it still interesting, I'll continue in part four.